I do not know how to start today's video, so I'm just going to do it this way. Welcome, everybody, to Four Corners, Florida, down here just south of Claremont, EV charging stations, juicing my bad boy up, Stitch. Well, his name's not Stitch. I named him Experiment 626. See how I did that there? So, what's your car's name? Is this S Stitch? No, I named it Experiment 626 because that is Stitch's name. Experiment 626. But then stuff stuck in a truck is over there charging her car because we're gonna go on an adventure tonight. I did not know how to start today's video. I didn't know if it was better to start it beginning the adventure or the beginning, beginning, beginning of the adventure. And I think that's what I chose. Start at the very, very beginning when the sun is still up. So a lot of you know, we're getting ready to do a pretty stupendous trip. If I didn't tell you in the last clip earlier today, we are getting ready to jump on the road in our cars. And uh, I drive a Nissan Leaf, a 2021 Nissan Leaf, all electric, obviously. And Steph's stuck in a truck, drives a 2017 Chevy Bolt. And we are gonna see if we could drive across the country and see if the infrastructure that is built out across the country can support cars that should not be able to drive across the country. But before we do that, we are planning on doing a little bit of testing. So I drove over here. This is my RV cousin, Eddie, and uh, got it all set up. Gonna just leave the cat here overnight. And in about four hours, we are gonna hop in each other's respected vehicles respective respected i don't I don't know what the word is and we are going to head south and do a 600 mile road trip tonight throughout the night and then come back tomorrow from here in wildwood florida down to key west florida we're going to drive throughout the night practice charging and see what it's like if it's better to drive the cars at nighttime because they're electric charging stations should be empty we should be able to get in charge get out throughout the night Plus that hot Florida heat that the roads suck up during the daytime, you know, we're not going to have that battery issue, the overheating that we hear so much about in social media. Don't know if it's true or not. I have not experienced it. I don't believe Steph has experienced, but if anyone was going to, it'd be me because my batteries in my car are not liquid cooled. Like her, most cars nowadays have liquid cooled batteries, some sort of battery management. The Nissan Leaf does not. So, I'm thinking for this California trip, it's probably better to do the driving throughout the night and then, then during the daytime, get a campground, something similar to here, Wildwood, a uh, thousand trails, or a hotel room and then do some Uber and DoorDash, you know, from the hotel, make a little extra money and then continue on and then drive throughout the night and then relax in the daytimes at a, at a, in a room or a tent. I also got a tent. But before we do that, we, we need to do a little bit of road testing. So this is gonna be 100 miles longer than I have driven it so far. I have driven it to Daytona and back <coughs> and around Orlando. And, and I drove 500 miles in one day, just farting around in Orlando, going to Daytona Beach, coming back to Wildwood. So I have done it, but it's been a lot of city driving. We are gonna hop on the interstate on the turnpike and drive from here and make it all the way to Key West, watch the sunrise, eat some breakfast from the beach, about 89 miles from Cuba, and then turn around and come right back. So, and it'll be in the daytime tomorrow. So we're gonna get a nighttime drive to see if the car does good at night. And then tomorrow in the heat of the Florida sun, see if uh, it affects my battery at all. Because that is going to kind of, you know, give me a guideline of what I should be doing heading out because we're gonna be crossing Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, the desert, the deserts, right? So I wanna make sure what's the best time to drive and, and everything, so we're, we're practicing. We're leaving in July, so we might as well practice before then and knock out all the little kinks that we can. And there is an armadillo right behind the camera. Would you look at him go? Little armadillo, little, look at that little feller. Out there looking for insects. For those that don't live in the United States, you have to Google armadillo. He, he's out there chilling. Well, he's actually running. 
I actually think that is a sign of good luck seeing an armadillo before we take off. Anyway, Steph has went to the store to get a couple supplies for herself for the road. I'm just going to take me a large apple juice and uh, at the first stop hopefully get some Dunkin' Donuts coffee and head on down towards Miami and charge up down there. My car does 230 miles on average. I'm kind of going to try and see if I can get that on the interstate. Well, you know, good luck. Uh, I'm guessing I'm probably going to be able to do about 190 miles between charges at 70 miles an hour. We'll see. Uh, just hopefully everything goes good. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you uh, once we take off. Let's see if this little experiment works or if we fail and I need a tow truck. Oh, that would not be good. Okay, so it is midnight. We are getting ready to get on the road. We're trying to do kind of a battle. Whose car can charge faster? Whose car can go further? And uh, who's going to have the least problems getting down to Key West and back up here north of Orlando? That should be pretty exciting. Looking forward to it. At the moment, we are planning on getting out of here both with only 80% battery. We're both going to charge to 80%. And then we're going to head down to Turkey Lake Road in Orlando and see how, how our performance and how, many, how much energy we're burned just to get to Orlando. So we can kind of judge what the rest of the trip is going to be like. This is going to be a long 600 mile trip overnight. <sighs> I'm at 70%. About another five minutes I should be out of here. Funny thing is, we pulled in here. I'm already 10% further in battery charge than her. My car, hey, Nissan Leaf owners, we got the Chevy Bolt in charging speed. Awesome, right? Another thing I'm gonna be looking for is how much did it cost to do this trip? How much does it cost to go from Wildwood, Florida to Key West and back? And our very similar cars, just different speeds and different methods of charging. Starting off here in Wildwood, this is free, and I am at 80%, I can leave. But since this is the beginning of our journey, uh, I'll stick around and wait for her, even though sh I'm sure her car is not there yet. We're both decided to leave at 80, oh man, I'm at 81. I'm ready, is, are you at 80? Oh, but you're supposed to stop right at 80. Uh, oh, so I have to stop, okay, I'm done. You know, I don't like... Okay, I'll meet you at Turkey Lake. I'm out of here. Canoe Creek. They got these new chargers in. They're pretty nice. They just don't give you any information on the screens. You really... They, they don't give you any information. You have to look at the information on your telephone. But look at these new things. These killer 300... I think they're 350 watts. They're just putting them in, so they're out of order. But th this is a liquid cool to keep every the hose cool because it charges at such a high power but uh first stop canoe creek getting our charge now i've had a lot of people especially work truck drivers they uh, like if you're at a walmart or something like that and, and they're and and you're you know in it, people go to walmart truck drivers go to walmart and uh, a lot of people i work with uh they go, oh, you got that? You got an EV, right? You got an electric car. And we have. Where, do you charge at Walmart and stuff? I go, yeah. They go, yeah, but what? When the when there is no electricity, they got those big boxes with the diesel generators. So you're not really saving the environment much. I'm not looking to save the environment. I'm looking on saving money and not buying gas anymore. But um, you know, saving the environment's a nice little thing, a nice thing to throw in there. But they go. Yeah, but when the electricity goes out, you got those big diesel generators right there next to the pumps. And so you're getting electricity from petroleum anyway. And uh, I go, no, there's no diesel generators. There's no diesel generators connected to these things. And they're talking about the big boxes back there, right? The battery storage boxes. That's where all the electricity stored and converted from AC to DC or whatever. And... Uh, so we got drivers that actually think those are diesel generators. So, and, and it was probably, you know, not, I wouldn't blame them. They, they look like generators, but uh, no, that's, those have batteries in them. And, uh, 
it gets pumped into our cars and and it, it converts everything so there's no there's no diesel in those things it's there's no engines in there no motors there might be engines but there's no mo no there's no engines in there neither there but there's no motors it's no nothing to i don't know how to explain it you guys leave it in the comments to explain it to people that might watch this video so how how it all works so but anyway so uh, we're charging up at these new chargers here at canoe creek and then uh won't need to charge again at least to miami but we are going to hit one more we're going to hit fort drum and charge there just to check out the chargers a little bit because though my ccs's are my chatamos have been working so far tonight the ccs's at the last rest area turkey lake every ccs was out so she has not been able to get any juice until right now so what a turn of events right Normally, it's the Chatamos, the old-fashioned things that don't work. Nope, it's the new ones that don't work now. But that's okay. I'm plugged in. I'm topping off again. Why not? Well, she's going to be a while. Might as well top off. What's really crazy is Chatamo, at least in this situation, between a Chevy Bolt and a Nissan Leaf, I charge at least six to seven times faster. We could both start off at zero. She'll be at 5%. I'll already be at 10%. So we're definitely learning some stuff on this practice trip. Just got to make it to the keys before the sun comes up. The moon's still high in the sky though, so we're good. So we are right at about 200, 240 miles, I think. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and charge up to 100%, might as well. I got here at 50%. She got here about 50%. And these are some brand new chargers, chargers that are really, really nice. The name of the company is FPL, which I assume stands for Florida Power. And uh, they got these nice Evolution, Evolution chargers. So I'm charging. It looks like Steph stuck in a truck here is having a little bit of an issue, though. Oh, registered. But, oh, so FPL has these ones. And uh, what's blowing away is there's one, two, three. Let's see if there's any over here. Chatamos. Four. Oh, this is a fast one, too. Look at this. These are fast ones, and they got Chatamos here. So one, two, three three, four, five Chatamos here, and five CCSs. This is perfect. Oh no, there's more. There's another one down there just past my car. Just below, down there by the Tesla chargers. Well, the dog's out of the car. And there's ocean water. That must mean we made it. We made it. So 300, how many miles was it? Three. 360 here we still got to do 360 back ten and a half hours of driving ten and a half hours and uh no issues charging which was shocking the, the very first time she did not have ccs but for chatamo for nissan no issues it is pretty out Yeah, so I'm going walking down here by the ocean just to let my battery cool off before I go charge again and get something to eat. So for those of you Nissan Leaf people, uh, I did four charges. Didn't need to, but I, I did four. And uh, my battery did heat up throughout the night driving, but not too bad. Um, it's just a little bit above halfway hot, if you know what I mean there's a gauge that's like right in the middle and uh but i am worried about the drive home because it is a rather warm day not just here in the florida keys but up in orlando where we got to go back home to so um we're just going to chill for a little bit i have right around 200 mile range left and i figured okay let it cool off as an iguana runs right in front of me 
Let's see if we can zoom in on it. It's a little baby. They just had their babies. If I can see him here. Where's he at? There he, he's in there somewhere. There he, there he goes. Oh, but yeah, we're going to go eat. I can get by without uh, yanking my mic off. Let the battery cool just a little bit more and then drive all the way back up to Miami probably for the first charge going home. And I and instead of charging four times, I think we're only probably gonna have to charge two times. It's only 360 something miles. You get 230 miles of charge. It did pretty good coming down. So I, if, if as long as I don't run the AC too much, I should only have to do two or three charges and that's it. I, we'll just have to find out. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna shut you guys off for a little bit, enjoy some of the ocean down here in the Keys and uh, take you guys to go eat before we head out. Look at that, look at that water out there. As you guys can see, that's where I am starting my temperature on the way home. So we went 353 miles. So we got 353 miles back. And it looks like even on a hot day like today, I'm going to be able to do it without much throttling of juice. It looks like my heat has been staying pretty steady right about there, which is way incredible to what my old 2013 Nissan Leaf would do. Mishap. I had a little mishap during lunch. I went to pay with my credit card, put it in the bill in the little book. It flung out over the railing into the ocean. My credit card went out into the ocean. I had to go retrieve it the best I can. Go in the water. And uh, I did it. But in the meantime, the sand was so deep under the boardwalk at the restaurant we were eating at on, out on the island that I lost my flip-flops. I had some reefs that I got, kind of expensive flip-flops, you know, they were like, um, you know, they're over a hundred bucks for some reefs, lost them. So I have been going barefoot all day, finally found a sandal shop, got some new Hawaiian ones that weren't cheap neither, but man, they're so comfortable. But anyway, it looks like I am not gonna go home tonight and Steph is not gonna go home tonight. We decided to spend the night in Key Largo and just relax because we drove all night from Orlando in Wildwood area all the way down here to the Keys. And uh, we're just tired, we're tired. It's not that my car is hot, not that the battery's hot, and not that we're gonna have a hard time with chargers. As a matter of fact, the trip home should be so much easier than coming down here because I'm a charging nerd. Anytime there's a charger, I have to plug in. I have to plug in. If I see one on my map, I have to pull in and check it out, make sure it works. I'm sure a lot of you guys are the same way. We know every, we hit every single charger on the turnpike here. They all worked for me for the Nissan. Not all of them worked for the Chevy Bolt. There was some that the CCSs did not work, but the Chatamo, they, as a matter of fact, once you get south of Orlando, every single pump has a CCS 
and a Chatamo. So you pull into some of the rest areas and there's like six units with six different Chatamos and they all work. I tested them all out as, as some of them, not all of them, but some of them. So it gives me hope that Chatamo is going to be around for a long while still because all those pumps were brand new and they all had Chatamos on them. Electrify America, they kind of, you know, with the only one Chatamo, you know, they'll have 10 CCSs and one Chatamo. That kind of sucks. But other than that, you know, but there was no, no problem. So though we charged a lot coming down, going back, we can skip chargers because we know the chargers do work along the way. So there should be no headaches. But in the meantime, we're going to spend the evening here in Key Largo. Let me give you a room tour and then I'll take you on the property and show you around this hotel that we're staying at. It's not the fanciest. It's not the cheapest. I think that's just because you're on the islands. You don't expect rooms to be cheap. But uh, it doesn't look too bad. Kind of nice. Right when you walk in the door, you're greeted with two nice beds. A bed for Steph and a bed for me. Yes. And then we got nice big closets, TV, no coffee pot that I see. No coffee pot, but we do got a nice bucket. Oh, no, there's a, there's a Keurig in here. We do got a Keurig. Let's see what the bathroom is like. Turn all these lights on here. Got some fancy, oh, gotta turn that one on. Come on, kick on light. Got some fancy folded, clam-shaped, whatever. Ooh, do we, got the coffee pot. Do we have coffee? Oh, yeah, they give us plenty of coffee. Nice. Got a throne, a bathtub, and most importantly, a shower. Where Steph is, I parked, got everything, came up to the room, and she was looking for parking, but there's a lot of parking here. I don't even think she knows what room number we're in. I might be stuck here all by myself while she drives around the parking lot all night long looking for me. Because my phone is off. She can't call me. I turn it off. I'm trying to freak her out. Okay, this is the balcony here above the water in the marina. Going to take you guys down there real fast and check out the pool and... Then probably, with any luck at all, Steph stuck in her truck back there is gonna let me sleep for a little bit and then I'll come back out at nighttime. What a nice hot day. Figured I'd come over here and look at some water. Would you look down there? Look at all the mussels. Who wouldn't want to eat? There, there's a whole buffet down there. Look at all the ones down here by the seawall. Yum. Okay, this is, this is pretty spectacular, but uh, I know there's got to be more to this resort than just a couple boat docks. So under this thatch roof, it oh. looks like there's a bar. Ooh, a, a shark. There's a shark. Shark in the water. Oh, oh another one, another one, another one. Oh my God. We got some sharks in the water. Oh, there is a third. There's a... Yep. Oh yeah, sucker fish eating his skull. Hey, okay, that was kind of cool. Some sharks swimming by her feet. Little nurse sharks, probably it looks like to me. We're gonna go ahead and finish this tour, but before we do, we're gonna go into, like I said, before the sharks rudely interrupted us, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go get us a little drinky drink. I wanna walk out there and see if there's more than just sharks. But beer call, beer's calling me. Beer's calling me. En route. Would you look at this fantastic pool we got to swim in? Yes, we got our keys. You know what's crazy is uh, we had planned on going to the pool and shooting a little bit more video. Adult beverages got uh, out of hand. So, gonna walk around with a little bit of Corona and finish up today's video and then the next video you're, you guys are gonna have to tune in to uh, see what it's like to drive a Nissan Leaf in extremely hot and humid Florida temperatures from the Keys all the way back up to Orlando. And just basically because we were stupid and got a hotel room. Kinda wanted to do it all in one day but it's just, it's, uh, it came out to 700 miles when we did that. It's, it's just too much. Oh, 
I was going to walk around this entire resort at night because the lights are so beautiful. But you know, even from up here on the balcony, it is stupendous. I am going to go ahead and end today's video. I am full. I have had way too many adult beverages and I hate seeing myself at, on camera after I've had indulged, not have, but have indulged in numerous adult beverages. So I'm going to sign off from Key Largo here, wake up in the morning and take you guys on another video adventure coming out in a couple days of uh, what it's like to drive the Nissan Leaf from the Florida Keys 360 something miles all the way back up to Orlando in the middle of the day. So we came down here in this video in the middle of the night. Tomorrow we're going back up in the daytime. Is there a big difference? I don't know, we'll see. So until then, I hope you guys tune in and I am tuning out. What a beautiful Florida evening. Peace out everybody.